Hey YouTube, uh, been a little bit since I've done a video, um, figured I'd make something. It's, uh, here in Ohio, it's freaking freezing out here. Um, but I, for once I wanted to do a second video on the same car and it's the, uh, GR Corolla that I bought. Yeah. Sorry about looking like the Unabomber guys, but it's, uh, this weather sucks. You're sitting here in the Corolla now. Um, two things with this video, I guess, first of all, like I just discovered YouTube studio. Um, so now I can actually check easier when people comment. Uh, there's been a lot of comments, um, and it doesn't always notify me. So I wanted to say, I'm sorry about that. I'll try to answer everybody now. Definitely not trying to ignore all of you. So I've only got about 1130 miles on it. With the gauges, um, I set the turbo, the boost gauge on the right, just with the EG pack over here on the left, which is my favorite setup. Um, it's finally staying for some reason. I guess they're kind of finicky, but um, definitely enjoying the heated seats right now. It's six degrees outside. I'm sure some of you have it worse, but some of you have it better. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I wanted to go over a few things, uh, why this car needs a second review. Uh, there was a lot to tell, some I missed, and I may not even remember to have it all this time, so let me hop out here. Not a whole lot as far as modifications done. I mean, I just kind of cleaned it up today, but one of my favorite modifications is this mid-spoiler. I'm a big fan. Um... It's the Tom's Racing style spoiler. I dig it. I think it's kind of cool. To me, the back looks kind of plain. I know they make a lot of the larger spoilers for the for the top there where the third brake light is. I like them, but it's just... Uh, I'm probably just going to go with the mid-spoiler myself. I just got it on eBay for $100. Came painted black. Probably doesn't fit as perfect as uh, the, the actual Tom's one. This is just like a, you know, like a copy of that. But um, so, so far the car has been a ton of fun. I don't put a lot of miles on it because I don't drive far to work. Um, other modifications, I just did a uh, AEM drop-in air filter. Definitely hear some more turbo noises now along with some more intake air rushing in. Uh, probably not a huge difference on power, but I do feel a little bit um, a decent amount off the line better. Um, and at high RPMs, I feel a little bit more. So, yeah, that's it. I, I just, I had to make a second video here. Let's jump in. Okay, bear with me, folks. My apologies. Oh, yeah. Very cold, very cold. So, yeah, I got the break in miles, and since I've talked to all of you last, uh, what all have I done? I obviously did like the break in oil change right at about 640, 50 miles. Um, something else I want to mention I also did the front and rear axle fluid. Um, I, I like Redline. There's a lot of different stuff out there, but I like Redline. So I did that at right about 1,000 miles. Um, the Redline, I think it was GL5 for hypoid limited slips. Um, now the front one, the transaxle, um, was a little tricky to get to, um, the back one, yeah, it's a little tight under there working on these cars, but I got them changed, and I can tell you the rear axle, where these things tend to overheat, uh, the fluid was very, pretty dark and kind of dirty for such low mileage, uh, the front axle, if I could go back and do it over, I probably wouldn't have changed that yet, just to let you all know. I would definitely change the rear axle first. Um, much dirtier. Uh, but the front, it was like, it was like brand new. So, anyway, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, 
I'm all ears on what you guys think I should do. I was thinking about some IBAC, uh, just the Pro Kit. I, I like the look of the sport lines and everything, and I even like the look of how they raise some of them for like a rally car. Uh, but I'm probably going to end up going with the Pro Kit, uh, just about an inch drop all the way around. And I think it looks really fantastic with the factory wheels. Um, these cars lowered. I love the uh, inky wheels on it from the factory. Although they're kind of a pain in the butt to, to wash. But I did ceramic coat them so the stuff comes off a bit easier. Also, what are some of your recommendations for lower dust brake pads? Um, I'm not going to... I'm probably going to do the whole driving experience with the car. It's been 20 years since I've been to mid-Ohio here. Um... So yeah, what are your thoughts on brake pads? Uh, I do want something with a lot less dust. I've heard of like the EBC yellow stuff, the blue stuff. There's uh, something called endless brake pads, which I'm looking into. Uh, a lot of the chain parts stores don't seem to carry. Uh, you know, like your common Napa, whatever, ceramic gold brake pads. Yeah, they're not really out there yet. So yeah definitely if you guys don't mind recommend me some brake pads take you guys for another spin here so yeah uh, changing out the diff fluid um, the car does feel just a little bit smoother not saying Toyota doesn't make good fluid but I can definitely tell a bit of a difference with the uh, red line gear oil in there I'm probably gonna do the transmission fluid with some red line stuff probably about maybe 15,000 miles or so. Yeah, the roads are salty here. I don't drive the car in the slush, in the salt. Um, like to keep this one nice underneath and everything. But yeah, the roads are pretty, pretty dusty here. So another thing I noticed, uh, I just drive the car in normal mode, and I noticed at the boost gauge here, it only shows about 23 PSI, in case some of you didn't know. Now in sport mode, it will actually read the full 25, as advertised from the factory. So, so this is actually my first time driving the car with just that AEM filter. Um, and since the last video, I also did an MST turbo inlet. Uh, the car responded to those two modifications together. It really did. It feels good. Uh, just driving the car normally, there's a lot less pedal effort required, say, than before. To just drive normally and get up to speed. Uh, the gas mileage, I'd say, about the same. probably can't hear it through the camera but there's more intake noise uh, it changed the exhaust tone just a little bit and it seems to me the longer I've had this the more the ride has smoothed out um, and a lot of people on the Facebook forums I talked to about the IBAC Pro Kit um, they say like it handles railroad tracks just a little bit better smoother like the jarring type bumps um, but then certain areas, like it makes it a little bit rougher. So it's kind of a, kind of an even trade there. But the, the stance and handling will be improved, definitely. So, as far as other modifications, um, I really want to do the downpipe. Um, but man, there's just, I could afford it. I mean, there's some good companies out there right now, two or three that I know of, making a decent downpipe. Uh, with some proven gains, it's just I don't want to pay a thousand dollars plus for a downpipe, and a lot of them kind of include a mid pipe. So I was just going to do the mid pipe, but then I just, you know, if you're going to spend the money, it's like a, you know, the downpipe's going to give you more of an increase, like even without a tune. So right now I'm just waiting on a downpipe that, to me, at a reasonable cost, maybe four or five hundred. Um, not to you know, not to say that these ones out there are bad. I think they're pretty good quality. It's just I don't want to spend that much. So that's 
see other modifications I'm thinking of. Uh, I like the factory tri exhaust. I know a lot of people don't, but to me, it's just kind of one of those things that stands out about the car. I like it, and it does sound pretty good. I imagine with a downpipe, you would uh, just kind of have an increased version, maybe a little bit deeper sound with the downpipe. So, of course, you know, you get a car, it's just there's all kind of things you think about you want to do to it. They sell lots of little bits and bobs. I kind of like the where you replace the lower rear reflectors on the back bumper with like the Gundam style vents. I think that's kind of cool. That's probably in the future. Um, I definitely want a, a black circuit hood if anybody's out there. Hey, if you want to sell me that, I'd appreciate it. Definitely a want. And I guess the black circuit editions, there aren't that many of, so that could kind of be wishful thinking for me. Probably just gonna skip the whole big spoiler in the back. Lots of fun. Those tur turbo loves this cold weather. Oh, that's uh, that's another thing I'm definitely gonna get pretty soon. Probably be my next modification. Uh, the sixth company makes an intercooler um, and there is a way to do it without removing the front bumper thank goodness because if not you know yeah I'd probably do it just wait till the weather gets warmer at least but yeah there's a way to do that without you know you just kind of take off those bottom panels down there and a few bolts on each side clamps and watch the install video there it really doesn't look too bad yeah that's probably gonna be my next modification probably going to go with a lightweight battery nobody rides in my back seats um, and I just found out from another forum member that you know if you take out the back seats that you know it's not going to cause any check engine or any kind of issues like with disabling the cruise control so probably going to do that too since you know my kids are grown so nobody's really going to ride in the back plus I'll have some extra storage space um, Huh. Here we go. This is the road my dad and I call Corvette Alley because back when we had Corvettes, this would be the road we go and test the new modifications. Just one click up for sport mode here. Let's do a little second gear pull here. I think I'll turn on the uh, rev match too. Pretty instantaneous. Here we go. <laughs> it's a fun car. Yeah, the couple little things I've done to it, it did did make a notable difference. Nothing crazy. Um, eventually, past my warranty, I'm probably going to upgrade the valve springs, um, maybe camshafts definitely a tune obviously um, but I like having a warranty it's a newer car so I mean I've heard stories on the blocks for these cars going for ten to fifteen thousand dollars if you can get one so definitely trying to avoid that not in my budget anytime soon so yeah yeah dad and I have had a few drag races down this road <laughs> Last time we raced, I think my dad had a 95 Z28 Camaro, a couple little bolt-ons, SLP exhaust, k and filter, and I was driving a 2019 Camaro with that LTG four-cylinder turbo. Good race. There you go, for your viewing pleasure, everybody things are kind of, for what they are, they're kind of little monsters out of first gear. I love it. <laughs> Coming out of that turn there, it almost felt like it wanted to behave like a rear-wheel drive car. 
it's a blast it's a blast um, a lot of people just don't seem to know what these are there's a few people at my work you know that have said oh is that your GR you know they said oh, most people don't even know about those or know what it is and it's true they're not common yet the only one I've ever seen on the road and I drive for a living was another black one uh, literally at the beginning of my journey to Kentucky to get this one like what do you know and I haven't seen one before or after so yeah, that car is just a blast it's a blast IMT downshifting works pretty instantaneously. Um, I noticed since I changed the fluids, it seems to accelerate maybe a tiny bit quicker. Just a tiny bit. Definitely happy the suspension has since smoothed out a little bit. Just some back roads cruising today. So yeah, tell me, tell me about some of the modifications uh, for for you that have this car, like that you like, you know, that you think would make a difference. I don't want to go so far where it's just gonna totally void my warranty. I mean, it's some dealerships I think are more lenient than others. I think the tune would definitely kill your warranty no matter what. Um, I don't think. Like I said, again, depending on the dealership, I don't think the air filter would necessarily. But um, yeah, tell me some. Tell me some of the modifications you guys would like to see me do that maybe I haven't thought of, or maybe some that many of you have already done with yours. If you have a GR, always interesting to hear. Yeah, it's going to be a shorter video today, folks. Yeah, I appreciate all of you. And again, I'm sorry I didn't answer some of these questions um, to some of you out there. I just, YouTube didn't give me the notification. Since I got studio, I can actually go into the comments and see all comments at once, or it'll tell me, you know, if I've missed a comment, which is pretty nice. Uh, for those of you that got the heated seats and steering wheel package, uh, they work well. Very nice. Another good back road here. This is the one I tested, Dad C7. Definitely beats where I was before in the city. Just never again will I live in a crowded city. Just not for me. Took my missus a while to get acclimated. You know, she was about the convenience of the city life, but I think she's starting to get happier. Yeah, the car just feels so planted for a stock suspension. I mean, it's cold outside, so I mean, I don't have the summer tires right now, but these Michelins on the core, I mean, they do pretty good. It grabbed, there was no tire noise back at that last corner I got into a little bit. It, I felt confident, a um, little bit of body roll, but I mean, it is a stock suspension. I'm, I'm still impressed. And I think if anything else I was going to say here, um, got the transmission fluid. I mean, there's a lot of things I want to do. Yeah. You get into a car like this, and it's just, how could I make this better? How could I make that better? I don't drive this car like this every day, folks. <laughs> It's just for the video. I actually take really good care of it. But it does beg you to do stupid things. So I think within reason, if you're just not being crazy out here on public roads, you'll be okay. But I 
I've heard some stories about the clutch giving out in these. I mean, of course, if it does with this car, I don't believe I'm as hard on it. I, there's not a lot of modifications to this one or anything. But when it does, I'll probably do like a lightweight flywheel, of course, like a stronger, much stronger. I'm going to go total overkill on the clutch, but as much as I can with it still being very streetable, you know. But I think the clutch is all the way broken. Uh, I don't notice any clutch smell on hard accelerations or anything anymore like that. So I think that's pretty smoothed out and broken. Grab's really good. And I've heard a lot of stories, you know, you go over about, uh, I've heard 350 wheel horsepower is kind of what I hear a lot. You know, you may need to get a better clutch and better valve springs because I've seen some hor horrific images on YouTube and online where these things just have a giant hole in both sides of the block because maybe a valve spring let go and this and that happen. Like, yeah, I don't want that. So, yeah, again, thanks to all of you for the comments. And that's really cool. Thanks for the subscribes, too. That's awesome. Um, I never thought I'd get to the point of, like, 600 subscribers. I know that's, like, nothing, but I think it's pretty cool. Thanks, all of you. Yeah, that's about it for today. Thanks for watching.